Hello and uh, welcome to my July update here from the mayor's office. Uh, just a few things uh, I'll bring to your attention if you haven't been aware of some of the progress we're making here at City Hall and some of the things that are coming up. Um, the first one is that uh, the City Commission, we received an update during our Public Safety Committee meeting this week uh, with some really good updates about our work with the Urban League for Cure Violence. Uh, so this is an evidence-based violence prevention program that we started about a year ago now, a little, I believe almost exactly a year ago now. Uh, and we're closely tracking impact and outcomes. So we're actually working with a national uh, team that is helping us track impact. Uh, and the, the feedback so far and the outcomes so far are really positive. Uh, we know it's just a start. Uh, we need about three years of good data to be able to show impact. But so far, the impact has been pretty significant. Um, we are seeing a reduction in violent crime in those targeted areas that we're focused on. So I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to our partners at Urban League and everyone on the Cure Violence team. Uh, they're doing exceptional work. Uh, we are in the process of expanding that to other parts of the city. Uh, that was actually a priority identified in the participatory budgeting process. Uh, and so we're working with them right now to make that happen. Uh, and not only will that enable them to increase their staff, but they'll be able to touch a number of uh, individuals in certain neighborhoods throughout our city. So we're eager to see that program expand. A uh, couple other things here at the city, speaking of uh, health and safety, uh, the City Commission, over the last several months actually, we've been talking at length with community partners, listening to community members, uh, and hearing feedback on some of the proposed changes that are needed in order to address ongoing concerns. Uh, and so a few weeks ago, before the City Commission, uh, we brought forward some amended language for our nuisance code as well as our disorderly conduct code. Uh, these are narrowly defined uh, updates uh, that really provide greater clarity so that we can respond to ongoing concerns that have been raised, uh, both with uh, the, the accumulation of personal property and public right of way that can inhibit other people's use of those spaces, as well as to address some of the concerns that we've heard around loitering and accosting. Uh, and so the City Commission, we've spent a lot of time uh, working on those, again, uh, with a very thoughtful, narrow focus to address the concerns that we can't currently address with our current ordinances that are on the books. Uh, we know that that's not the only answer. We know that to end homelessness and to help people and to address a number of the concerns, not just downtown, but in neighborhoods all throughout the city, uh, we need to work with a lot of partners who are working with individuals to make sure that they are stably housed. Uh, so the City Commission also supported a contract with community rebuilders to do rapid rehousing. Uh, we are bringing along other partners to help fund that program. We continue to work with other nonprofits in our community to make sure that there are safe spaces for individuals. And then we also know that we need to make improvements in the system as a whole. So we're actively involved with the coalition as well as Housing Kent, looking at what we need to do within the entire housing and nonprofit system to make sure that we have better outcomes. So whether it's coordinated entry, having better data, having shared metrics, um, really improving outcomes across the continuum, uh, we know that that work still needs to happen. Uh, some great work has happened in the past, but we clearly have a long way to go. We'll continue to work on both fronts. Um, also want to give a huge shout out to our chief, Chief Brown, and his work with the Homeless Outreach Team. Uh, last week I was able to go and spend some time at Crossroads. They're another great partner in our community, providing an opportunity for people to come and get help during the day, and that's where we've also started a fusion center. So a lot of work happening in this space on multiple fronts. Uh, and to me, I've consistently said, it's not, it, it, there's not one single solution that is going to solve a complex problem. This really is a multi-pronged approach. Uh, and there's lots of ands. It's not either or. Um, there's a whole lot of ands. And we need to do things uh, differently and more effectively to address this problem. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, speaking of housing, we know that housing is, is really essential to Solving, uh, solving homelessness and unstable housing. Uh, and there's some things we can do and the City Commission has done around funding, but we also know that it's a policy issue. So last week the City Commission met in partnership with our entire Planning Commission and we talked about five different policy issues that we believe we can change within our zoning code 
uh, in order to create more opportunity for housing. So one is how do we make it easier for people to add accessory dwelling units to their properties. Uh, we talked about how do we um, encourage more smaller infill uh, throughout our neighborhoods. We talked about changing the number of unrelated occupants in a home from four to six. Uh, this will be especially helpful um, to nonprofit organizations like Wellhouse uh, and other larger houses that can have more than four unrelated individuals staying there. Um, and then we also looked at parking requirements and then what we can do to encourage uh, transitional housing or boarding homes in certain neighborhoods where it makes sense. Uh, so that discussion happened a couple weeks ago. Planning Commission was given some clear directive. They will work on that language. They'll bring it back to the City Commission for approval. My hope is that that will be done in the next 60 to 90 days. Um, and my hope is that we'll see a pretty significant impact from those policy changes. Uh, and then two more things. Uh, one, I want to give a huge shout out to our West Michigan uh, delegation in Lansing, so our state reps and our state senators who uh, have been strong voices for us here in Grand Rapids. Uh, this recent state budget had a number of direct allocations both to the city and to a lot of our partners in this community uh, with funds that will help us move forward some of our priorities. So for the city specifically, uh, we received a $35 million allocation that will help us build two fire stations over there in the third ward. Uh, and then also to help us get moving on our uh, fire training center. Uh, so we'll be working on those. Uh, and then we also received $6 million for uh, Martin Luther King Park. So we're really excited to be able to move forward, hopefully soon, on the rebuilding of an MLK Lodge, which has been talked about and has been a priority for that neighborhood for years. Uh, and then there's been other programs that were funded or at least received some funding. Uh, that we are also funding, including Valley Field, the redevelopment of Valley Field, Grand Rapids Public Museum, uh, United Methodist, Methodist Community House. Uh, when you add up all of the different allocations that are being received by either the city or some of our nonprofit um, partners, uh, it, it equates to about $91 million. So we're really grateful for that, and we're hoping to see a lot of those projects move forward now that they have that gap funding figured out. Uh, and then last, I'll make sure that you have on your schedule Art Prize. So Art Prize is back. I've had a lot of people ask me about that. I'm grateful to serve on the steering committee and to see um, an event that has been so integral to the economic vibrancy of our city come back uh, this year and uh, for three full weeks. So we'll be kicking off Art Prize on September 14th, uh, and that will go through October 1st. And we will have back some of the juror awards as well as the public vote. So we're really excited about the team that's working hard every single day uh, to get Art Prize off the ground. And uh, I hope you come out um, to enjoy it. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful summer month uh, and that you stay cool, but also um, that you just find some time to enjoy this season. So have a great week.